there is a simple editing trick to make any music track loop seamlessly. The technique itself is simple, but keep in mind that the process of creating music loops really starts with the composition. The music needs to have an ending, or even better, a transition that leads back to the beginning in a way that makes sense musically. This means that if you're working with a track that was not originally intended to be a loop, there is a chance that you might have to get creative with the editing and cut and rearrange sections of the composition to create a musical transition back to the beginning. With that said, let's switch to Audacity, where I use a track I wrote for the game Blind Fate Edo no Yami to demonstrate this technique. Let's start by importing some music. Press on File, Import, Audio, and double click on the track that you want to work with. To facilitate the editing, we need to create some kind of musical grid. This step is only necessary if you're working Audacity, uh, because if you're working some kind of more advanced audio software like Nuendo, Reaper, etc., um, this feature is built in in the software. So what we want to do is click on the empty space here, go to Generate Rhythm Track, and on the top parameter, Tempo in BPM, you want to input the tempo of your song, in my case 90 BPM is already what I need. The next parameter is beats per bar. This is where you define the time signature. In my case, my composition is for four, so four beats per bar is already correct. But if, for, for example, you were working on a song that it's in three, four, you will have to adjust this to three. Uh, the next parameter is number of bars. Four is enough to cover the whole length of my composition. Adjust that as you need and everything else should be fine at default. We can press OK. Let me move this track to the top. And now that we have this click track, we can use it to add markers and facilitate the audio editing. So the next step is to test and see if the two are aligned correctly and they uh, synchronize perfectly. So to do that, I want to zoom in at the very beginning of my composition where the first downbeat is, and I can see that the metronome spike is not aligned with the transient of the percussion here on the very first downbeat. So let me slide that until these two spikes align, these two transient align. And let's zoom out, and let's see if they're perfectly synchronized. sounds good to me, we can start editing. We want to split this introduction, which is a cymbal swell going to the downbeat of the music. Let's zoom in again on this uh, first click, spike, transient, and let's place the selection cursor right at the beginning of that spike and add our first marker. We're going to go into Edit, Labels, Add Label as Selection. Let's also move this track all the way to the top to be organized. Let's zoom in a little bit and let move it right at the beginning of the metronome spike. As you can see now, we have a line that is magnetic, uh, clips and editing will snap to it. And that's exactly what we want to do. Let's click on the beginning of the audio track and start splitting this two portion of audio. We're going to go into edit. Clip boundaries, split. Now that we have separated these two portions of audio, let's add the smallest fade in and fade out to these two clips to avoid any possible clicks or pops at the beginning and at the end of these audio portions. I'm going to select until it snaps to this marker, and then I'm going to reduce the selection to the smallest amount possible audio because I don't want the fade in and fade out to be noticeable. Now that I have it selected, I'm going to go into Effects and add a fade out and repeat the same process on the other side of the clip, but this time I'm going to add a fade in. Effects, fade in. Okay. We want to do the same exact thing at the end of the composition. So let's zoom in. Here, having a uh, marker right at the end of the last bar by referencing the click track is extremely useful. We don't have uh, some kind of percussion transient that we can eyeball to spot where 
the end of the last bar is and where the reverb tail begins. So this approach is extremely useful. Same thing, let's select right at the beginning of the click track, spike, as close as possible. Then I'm going to edit, labels, and a label at selection. Zoom in even more, slide it right at the beginning of the audio. Use that marker to select uh, on the song track. And then go into edit, clip boundaries, split. Same thing, we need to have two small fade in and fade out. I'm gonna do it very quickly. Select until it snaps to the marker, reduce the length to the minimum, to, to the minimum amount possible. Effects, fade out, and repeat the process on the other side, this time with a fade in. Effects, fade in. Now let's zoom out one more time. At this point, if you're done rearranging and cutting and editing your track, uh, we can delete the click track to make sure it will not end up in the final export. Let's add a new stereo track and let's move this two portion audio that we chopped at the extreme boundaries of the loop region to this new track. What we wanted to do now is to reverse the order of this portion of audio so that the intro starts playing toward the end of the loop and the reverb tail starts playing at the beginning of the loop. We're gonna slide them until they snap to the marker. And we are now ready to test it. Let's activate the loop and drag the boundaries again to the beginning marker and to the end marker to see if the editing is clean. <music> Sounds good to me. We can hear the reverb tail nicely uh, crossfade back to the beginning of the loop. And one more thing left to do is to select everything by pressing Ctrl and A, slide the whole content to the beginning until it snaps to zero, and we are now ready to export. File, export, export as WAV file, name it accordingly, click save, and it's going to warn us your track will be mixed down and exported as one stereo file, and that's exactly what we want. I'm not going to bother putting any metadata tags right now, so I'm going to just press OK. And we are done. What's left to do, which is a good practice, is to test this audio in a different software to make sure that it loops correctly with no pops, no clicks, and no, no artifacts. <music> Sounds good to me. We are done. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment below if you have any questions. If you want to find out more about the video game Blind Fate Edo no Yami, head to Steam where you can play a free demo and wishlist the game. Bye.